So now let's look at financial statement analysis, but we'll look at analysis that relates more to the financial markets, the ability of a firm to borrow money or to raise equity capital more than at the individual operating metrics that managers can use to drive their efficiency. Debt utilization ratios provide information about how much debt an organization is using relative to other sources of capital, such as owner's equity. Debt financing is riskier than equity financing since it demands monthly paybacks or at least periodic paybacks, paybacks regardless of current situations or current profitability. In addition, recessions affect heavily indebted firms because far more because of the, the need to pay back given downturns in their profits uh, because the indebted firms are much more likely uh, to have to be to be under pressure from a cash perspective than our equity financed firms. Most companies tend to keep their debt to asset levels below 50%. In other words, less than half of their total assets are financed by debt, more than half being uh, shareholders equity. It's kind of a rule of thumb. Debt to total assets ratio indicates how much of the firm is financed by debt and how much is financed by owner's equity. To find the value of Microsoft's total debt, you must add current liabilities to long-term liabilities to long-term debt and other liabilities. So the total debt, uh, debt to assets ratio is their debt, total liabilities of $63.4 billion divided by their total assets of $142 million, well, excuse me, 142 billion dollars for a ratio of 45%. For every dollar of Microsoft's total assets, 45% is financed with debt. The remaining 55% is provided with owner's equity. The times interest earned ratio, that is equal to operating income divided by interest expense. It's a measure of the safety margin a firm has with respect to making interest payments that it must make to its creditors. A low times interest earned ratio indicates that even a small decrease in a company's earnings may lead to the company finding itself in very difficult financial straits, being unable to make their, their debt payments out of their operating cash. For this ratio, Microsoft's EBIT, remember operating profit, uh, earnings before interest and taxes of 26.9, 26.86 billion dollars is divided by their interest. Microsoft had so little interest expense that it did not list it as a separate item on its income statement. In this case, the analyst has to go searching through the footnotes of the financial statements. In note three, we find that interest expense was $429 million. Putting this into the calculation, we find that interest expense is covered 62.39 times by operating income. A lender would have no worries about receiving interest payments from Microsoft, so they would have ready access to debt. Very comfortable that they make enough operating cash or operating profit to easily pay down their debt. Those are the sorts of things that the financial institutions are looking for. Investors may use per share data to compare one company with another on an equal or per share basis. Earnings per share is calculated by dividing net income or profit by the number of shares of stock outstanding. This ratio is important because yearly changes in earnings per share <clears throat> in combination with other economy-wide factors This ratio is important because the uh, earnings per share in combination with other economy-wide factors determine a company's overall stock price. Dilutings, diluted earnings per share equals the net income divided by the number of shares outstanding, but diluted. Diluted shares include potential shares that could be issued due to the exercise of stock options that are already present. You know, many, uh, like, uh, incentive stock options that employees might have or senior management, or the conversion of certain types of debt, certain types of preferred debt that might be convertible in the common stock. So diluted means all of those, you assume that all of those shares that could possibly be, um, be used or be claimed based upon conversions um, 
are included in the calculation, and that's the difference. Microsoft's diluted earnings per share equals their net income of 21.9 billion divided by the diluted number of outstanding shares, 8.5 billion, for $2.58 a share. We can see from the income statement that Microsoft's basics earnings per share is is declined from 2.69 per share to 2.58 per share. This decline also shows the diluted earnings per share shows up in diluted earnings per share. So you can see that there is a, a certain number, but not that many outstanding shares that may be options that may be exercised or share or other types of uh, of, uh, of financial instruments that might be converted into shares. Dividends per share are paid by the corporation to the shareholders for each share owned. The payment is made by earnings after taxes from the earnings after taxes by the corporation, but it's a ta but it is taxable income to the stockholders. So dividends result in dub in double taxation. Since 2004, Microsoft has raised its dividend every year from 16 cents per share to 92 cents per share. Microsoft's dividend paid of $7.5 billion divided by the number of shares outstanding, that is 8.1 billion shares, its actual shares outstanding, equals a dividend of 92 cents per share. So that's some of the uh, thinking about it from a financial markets perspective. In the last lecture in this uh, module, we'll talk about how all this sort of comes together in a notion of the importance of financial in uh, integrity in organizations and how government regulation and the like help to support all of this information being effective and being trustworthy so that investment investors could can invest with good with confidence in the information that they receive.